Hello everyone, Amanda here from scrimpymommy.stampingup.net I just thought I'd come and share this really cute and easy little gift box with you today I've been making lots of these um, for team gifts for a team retreat that we're doing um, It's just very very simple and quick and easy so that you can make these in no time You could always also step it up and decorate them really fancy um, to, to really make it special So this is a 2 by 2 by one and it's a very simple um, lidded, got its own built in lid and in here is a little gift for each of uh, the ladies that are attending my team retreat I'm not showing you the gift because that's a secret but I just needed something that I could make a, in batch you know a bulk make um, item that I could create really quickly so I'm going to show you how it's made Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make the little box. So we've got a piece of A4. First of all, on the long side, we're going to cut it to nine inches. Okay. And then on the short side, we're going to cut it to four inches. So you can get two out of a sheet of European A4. So cut that one to four, and then the other one will be just over four. So trim that down, and then you can make two at once okay so let's move that out of the way and bring in my scoreboard I am only going to make one all right so let me just zoom out ever so slightly I'm trying black cardstock on my desk to try and reflect the light hopefully it'll be a bit easier on the eye so what we're going to do first of all is on the short side we're going to score first of all at one inch and then three inch then we're going to turn it on the long side. We're going to score at one, two, four, five, seven, and eight. Okay, so I'll just repeat that. So on the long side, one, two, four, five, seven, and eight. And on the short side, one and three. Or basically, you're scoring each side at one inch. That's all you need to do. Okay, let's just bob that away. Okay, so we're going to have um, the lip of the box um, double strength. So that's going to fold in. So what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is on this square here, we're going to notch. Hopefully you'll be able to see. So we're notching to the corner. Okay, and then we're going to remove that. So we're going to remove it. Take that away. Then we're going to notch to that corner. So you notch your flaps and keep the longer sides straight. So then we're just going to cut that straight down the scar line. Removes the scar line. So then you've got that. Okay. So we're going to do the same on all of the little squares. All right. So I'm notching into the corner on a slant and then going straight down that scar line. Same here. At a slant to the corner, straight down the scar line. And then you've got little notched flaps like so. All right, we're going to continue. So notch to the corner, straight down the scar line. And we're going to notch that one and then we're going to remove that because we don't need it. Okay, and then we're going to do the same at the other side. So we're going to notch to the corner and then remove that entire square so we don't need any of it. And we're going to cut on a slant there to notch and then straight up the scar line. And then again here, only on the little squares do you do that. At a slant to the corner, straight up the scar line, and just continue all the way along and do the same. All right, I made a whole batch of these, you might see them in the thumbnail. Um, and once I got going, once I'd figured out what size I need, needed, and I got going, what I did was I cut all of the all of the lens first, then I did all the scoring, then I did all the cutting, then I assembled them all. So I had a little conveyor, like a conveyor belt going, like a manufacturing line. So what I'm going to do now is these two long, these two end pieces are going to fold in. So I just want to trim a sliver off. All right, there's no specific measurement, just a sliver so that it doesn't catch when you fold it in. All right, let's remove those. 
and you can make this for any time of year. You can make it just for the sake of it to send somebody a little gift. Maybe you've got some jewellery or a little soap or a little um, wax melt samples I get from my, my Sensi Rep. <laughs> um, maybe you're gifting jewellery. Um, I put a little gift in here that I'd had made for my team members. I'm not telling you what it was. <laughs> it's a secret. Right, so now what I need to do is, um, and I haven't scored, I mean folded and burnished any of my score lines yet because it's not really necessary until this stage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to gently fold over and because it's only small, you don't need to be heavy handed uh, with a bone folder etc. It's really not necessary. So then what we're going to do, I've got it on the slant like so. So you're going to need tape on the inside of these flaps because they're going to fold in to strengthen. And then you fold in all of the little squares. Alright, fold them inwards. And you want adhesive on this side. where you, you don't need adhesive on anything else. Just the little squares. Okay, I'm using the new Stamp and Seal Plus. There's two different kinds. There's a Stamp and Seal Plus and the standard Stamp and Seal. So this one's for paper and this one's for cardstock. It's very strong. <laughs> All right. So let's start here. So I need a line there. All right. It's very similar to Fast Fuse, where gentle pressure and then at the end tick to release it. Very, very similar to the previous that we had. It's just a different, it's a bit bigger to hold. Um, some people might find it easier, hopefully, but it is very, 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 very sticky. It's very good, okay? If you go over your boundary, just roll it over with your finger. My hand-eye coordination is not brilliant, so sometimes I go over where I should be. And then I'm just going to put some on there, okay? And then just turn it around, and doing that flat there. Okay, and this one, oh, just roll it over if you go over like I do, I can't always see what I'm doing, <laughs> and then this one here, that's better, I'm still getting used to it but it is very much the uh, glide and tick, so then these little squares either side are going to attach to here, like so, so you fold it around and I hold it with my finger and gently feel when it's flush with that edge and then commit because it is strong is that stamp and seal plus if you've committed and you try and undo it it will tear your cardstock because it's very strong adhesive all right and then we're folding that in obviously you can use wet glue if you want but i find with boxes it's easier to use um, a strong adhesive uh, runner than glue because you can get all fingers and thumbs all right that one there, just lift that back and fold that over, line it up and then we're going to go with these ones and line these two up, super simple, nothing new, you have seen it before, I just made the size to fit what I wanted, okay, and I did have that where that's a bit stronger and folds over, alright, and then one other thing I do like to do when I make these boxes, is I like to cut this at a slant. For me, I don't know why, it just feels neater. And I don't even necessarily measure it. All I do is move that one out of the way, get my scissors and cut across. And I'm not too worried if they're not exactly the same either. It's just a little box. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect. All right. And then you've got that little slant there. And then for me, when the box is closed, it just, for some reason, it just looks neater, all right? And it doesn't seem to flap about as much. So that's why I do it. There's always method in my madness. So then, obviously, you'd get your small whatever it is you're putting in there. You could even put little chocolates in there, maybe, or um, lots and lots of things you could put in. Um, maybe put some little tissue in. And that will hold nice and firm in there. And that does measure two by two by one. All right, and then it's just a case of decorating it. So you can do it in any colour you want, have it for any season and for any reason. I'm going to be using the this paper, which is called Tis the Season. 
DSP. I've just been giving away this to some of my customers this month who shopped with me, got some of this paper. And so I've got a little bit left over, so that's what we're going to use. Right, so I'm going to cut, and I'm going to be frugal as well. So that's a lovely strong box. I don't need to blather it with loads of DSP. It's not necessary, but it's a bit plain. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim. This is a 6x6 DSP. I'm just going to trim at half an inch. Uh, in fact, I'm a half an inch. I'm just going to lift it up, and I'm just going to... Just gently trim off a very thin sliver so that when I cut my half an inch it'll show the um, um, candy canes. Maybe just go just over so it just catches the bottom of the candy canes. Alright, lovely. So all I need to do, move that away a minute. And then I'm going to get some tip. And I'm going to put some tape on the back of that strip of DSP. Oops, that's not on straight. Oh, get off. That's not straight. I need it straight, please. Um, there we go. You can always rescue it. It doesn't matter. Right, okay. Remove that. Decide which way up I want it and then this should just fit so I'm just going to put because I've cut it at an angle I'm going to put the top corner to the edge and then I'll be trimming some off okay so just gently press there and then follow around the shape of the box just nip it there so if you're bothering enough to score it all right just nip it with your fingers to get that corner and then pull it along there okay and then you can just lift it up like that and just trim off the excess where I, you know if you decide to trim it like I do you just trim it off okay right there we go all right it just adds even more stability and it just adds a little bit of seasonal decoration Okay, so then I'm just going to very quickly decorate the top. The idea of this box is to keep it very, very simple so they can be batch made in next to no time. So there'd be no point then going crazy with the decorating and um, going crazy adding loads of stuff. So I just need some a Whisper White cardstock. Please tell me I've got some nearby and I don't have to start hunting. I've not brought any to the table, what a waller. Hold on a minute, let me see if I can find some in my scrap bin. Here we go. I'll just borrow some of this. Okie doke, so I'm using Itty Bitty Christmas. Um, I bought it last year, hardly used it, so I've told myself I'm going to use it this year. And I'm using this one which says, thinking of you at Christmas. I'm going to, I've already put it on a block and I'm going to use Cherry Cobbler. <coughs> which is the same colour as the cardstock. You could, it would be nice if you did it in green as well to like, you know, contrast. You've still got your Christmassy colours. I'm going for the centre there because I'm going to punch it out. Lovely, beautiful. All right, and then I'm going to punch it out with my one and a half inch circle punch. So I'm just centralising that. There we go. Alright, and then I'm going to use, hmm, don't know whether to go with the DSP or to go with gold. Let me have a look, let me have a think. Do I want gold or do I want the coordinating DSP? I think I'm going to go for gold because I think if I use the coordinating DSP it's going to just not sh show up very well. So then we can just... Use our stamp and seal. Again, work fabulous on that gold cardstock. Find the centre of there. Give that a press. And then just grab some dimensionals. And we'll put our sentiment, we'll pop it up. Um, and then you've got yourself a super, super simple little gift box. You don't have to be all singing, all dancing all of the time. Sometimes you might want to batch make for, I don't know, 
Uh, maybe you're doing something for charity or a team event or, you've, or you're doing a class or you run a brownies group or guides or scouts or you just want to make them for fun. Um, craft fair season's coming hopefully if we're not all still in lockdown with Covid. You could make these, a batch of these with a little um, wax melt or a lovely candle in, a small you know, candle, floating candles or something like that, that would look lovely. There's loads and loads of ideas and then we just centralise that and nice and super simple and easy to make. You can obviously go wild and add extra decoration if you want, I don't think it's necessary. I think that's all you need for a little gift box and I think that's fab. Give it a try, thanks for watching, bye!